Why News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. A consumer group warns the consumers against alleged modus operandi online. Here's why from Monoxon. Online shopping remains in demand due to the convenience it provides to consumers. Nowadays, almost everything can be done through the internet, whether it is grocery, purchasing of gadgets, or booking of hotel or flights. This is especially true for residents of Metro Manila where traveling is very difficult, particularly during rush hour. However, despite the undeniable success of online shopping, many consumers are falling to prey to various modus operandi being committed online. According to Vic Dimagiba of the consumer group Laban Consumer, people should be careful in purchasing products or services through the internet. Dimagiba advises shoppers to properly check if the online store is authorized by the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI and to not be immediately enticed by discounts and promotions. So sa mga promotion, hanapin po nyo kung may approval ng Department of Trade and Industry o approval ng ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na nagbibigay ng mga permis sa mga promotion. According to Rosel Ray, a financial and business consultant, there is a way to determine the legitimacy of a website offering products or services. Normally, pag binerify natin, meron dun sa taas nila HTTPS. Yung S na yon means secured yung site. Somehow, at saka yung lock, no? Medyo, pag nakita natin sa site yon parang yung, yung medyo kampante na tayo na uh, secured itong site na ito. Kasi meron sil sila ay um, naka-attain ng certificate na HTTPS. One of the victims was UNTV News anchor Darlene Basingan. She purchased an item online but was shocked upon receiving the parcel. Tapos nung dumating yung order, hindi kasi namin chinek. Kasi siya, hindi niya chinek, binigay niya na directly dun sa pagbibigyan niya. Nung tinignan, walang laman. So yun, nagalit pa yung pinagbigyan niya. According to Dimagiba, consumers can seek the help of government authorities when being victimized by an online shopping modus operandi. Uh, pwede po tayong magdulong ng reklamo sa Department of Trade and Industry kasi under the law po sa Consumer Act, sa Electronic Commerce Act, sila po ang inatasan ng batas na protektahan ang karapatan ng mga consumers. Anyone with complaints can report it to the DTI hotline number 751-3330. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas confirms that it changed the design of the 5 peso coin. Meanwhile, the BSP says the faceless 100 peso bill is just an isolated case. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. The post of a netizen about four faceless 100 peso bills withdrawn from a BPI automated teller machine has gone viral. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas says the public must not be alarmed because the said faceless banknotes are only 33 pieces. The BSP adds that they were just a misprint due to machine error. The BSP has also not received any reports if other denominations have been affected by the technical glitch. The said printing machine is acquired by BSP last month. Millions of banknotes are printed by the BSP on a daily basis. In the manufacturing and production process, there are cases when machine errors, errors cause rare misprints. In this particular case, the BSP has identified the me mechanical cause of the said erroneous printing. It has since been resolved. The BSP warns against treating the said faceless banknotes as legal tender and such should be returned to the BSP. We would also warn against considering, you know, treating them like regular legal tender because if you look at it, wala na dun yung ibang security features na, na kailangan to guard against the authenticity of the bill, di ba? We would caution against them being used in retail, you know, regular transactions precisely because wala na yung, mayroon siyang ano, kulang. And uh, those who transact in them as if they were legal tender, which they are, do so at BSP also appeals to the public to coordinate with them and not resort to posting to the social media in case they encounter such misprinted banknotes to prevent alarm. 
Meanwhile, the BSP attributed a change in the 5 peso coin to its shortage in the circulation. The BSP claims that all 5 peso coins are being kept in coin banks as savings, souvenirs, and for other reasons. The BSP adds that a new coin is designed to commemorate the death anniversary of Gat Andres Bonifacio. The new reproduction is expected to address the huge demand for coins during the holidays. BSP also insists that a new 5 peso coin is very much different from the 1 peso coin. The 5 peso coin is heavier. It is thicker and slightly larger than the 1 peso coin. Moreover, the 5 peso NGC coin size are smooth, while the 1 peso coin has ridges. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Health or DOH advises individuals with asthma or respiratory problems to avoid areas that would be full of smoke during this weekend's festivities. Here's why from Ico Miguel. Chest pain, panting, and difficulty in breathing. These are the common symptoms being experienced by Ronnie Cuenco during asthma attacks. He has been experiencing symptoms of asthma for 13 years now, especially during New Year festivities when the use of firecrackers is prevalent. So, I just stay in the house. I'm not going to go out because I'm not going to go out. So, when I inhale that, I'm not going to go out. Uh, Nakaka-experience din ako ng ano, uh, shortness of breath, parang gano'n, parang napupuno yung lungs ko. In line with the New Year revelry, the Department of Health or DOH reminds the public, especially those with respiratory illnesses like asthma and pulmonary diseases such as bronchitis, to remain inside their homes and close their windows and doors to prevent the smoke from firecrackers from entering. They are also advised to wear surgical or face masks or clean handkerchief or towels to cover their nose so as to avoid inhaling smoke. They should also have with them sufficient supply of medicines as well as inhaler and nebulizer in case they experience symptoms of their respiratory illness. According to the DOH, they have not recorded a rise in the number of hospitalizations due to inhalation of smoke from firecrackers. Despite this, DOH Sentinel sites are prepared to address such cases. Ready naman yung mga oxygen natin, yung mga uh, pausok, nang sa gayon ay eh, lumuwag ang paghinga ng ating mga pasyente. Nakaready lahat ito. Meanwhile, the number of firecracker victims has climbed to 98 today. One of the new cases is that of a 13-year-old teenager from Negros Occidental whose finger was amputated due to bazooka. It is the fourth case of finger amputation due to firecracker. The DOH reminds the public to celebrate the new year in a safe and peaceful way to avoid losing or injuring themselves. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government warns of imposing fines and of arresting anyone who would be caught violating the firecracker ban during the year-end revelry. Here's why from Mon Hoxon. Anyone who would be caught using firecrackers outside of designated zones will face fines or arrest. This has been the warning of the Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG to the public several days before the new year. According to DILG officer in charge, Yusek Catalino Coy, the agency yearly advises the public to not use prohibited firecrackers as they might face penalties. Those caught using prohibited fireworks will face a fine of 20,000 pesos to 30,000 pesos and imprisonment of six months to one year. The prohibited firecrackers are Piccolo, Goodbye Philippines, Goodbye Napoles, Watu C, Plapla, Super Lolo, Atomic Big Triangulo, and Pillbox among others. The public is allowed to use Baby Rocket, Bawang, Small Triangle, Sparklers, Lucy's Fountains, and other pyrotechnics. In the city of Caloocan, the Chief of Caloocan Police is busy implementing a total firecracker ban. Local authorities designated 64 areas in the entire city. Aside from the areas, there are no other firecracker zones in Caloocan City. Uh, very strict tayo sa mga pagpapaputok, sir, kasi meron lang naman tayong mga tinatawag na authorized firecrackers na pwede nilang papaputokin. Pero we have to limit. We have to limit talaga. Doon lang sa mga tinatawag nating allowed, allowed firecrackers. The PNP Caloocan also conducted an inspection at a designated firecracker zone in a village in the city. 
Barangay 125 is among the villages that asked the PNP to allow them designate a firecracker zone. The PNP considers its request, however, told the local officials to prepare the necessary requirements. Ngayon, nakita natin yung dapat maglagay ng mga drum na may tubig, fire extinguisher, at saka yung mga barrier, mga concrete barrier para hindi mapasok ng mga bata na pwedeng mamulot pagka hindi pumutok yung mga sinindihan. So para maayos naman tong lugar nila. The village is thankful that they are allowed to have a designated firecracker zone to avoid accident. Ipapapaalala rin para sa mga, siyempre, uh, bilang babala para maiwas na mga disgrasya sa karamihan, lalo na sa Kalokan. Kasi rito, usually, na marami talagang uh, every year na nagkakasunog, lalo na sa Kalokan. On Saturday, a caravan will be held in Kalookan to remind the public about the prohibited firecrackers. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Kalookan City. NCRPO Chief Police Director Oscar Albayalde warns policemen found guilty of committing indiscriminate firing to be immediately dismissed from service. Here's why for Rajela Dora. There will be no second chances for cops who would indiscriminately fire their service firearms during the New Year revelry. This has been the warning of National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO Chief Police Director Oscar Albayalde. According to the General, the NCRPO will have no mercy to erring policemen as they will be immediately dismissed from their posts. Albayalde also confirms that the two Pasig City policemen caught firing their guns last week are already facing charges of illegal discharge of firearms and now under restrictive custody. At ang direktiba ng Chief PNP dyan ay i-dismiss sila sa servisyo. No mercy. No mercy doon sa mga police na mahuli na mag-indiscriminate uh, firing. With this, General Albayalde calls on cops to no longer attempt to use their guns during New Year festivities so they won't lose their jobs. The NCRPO chief also knows policemen facing charges. Even minor ones can no longer use their service firearms. Albayalde notes more than 9,000 cops are also tasked to guard areas with cases of indiscriminate firing last year. Yung sa Nabotas, meron last year tayong insidente doon. Sa may uh, Manila, sa may uh, Baseco area, uh, sa Tagig, doon sa may uh, Maharlika area, madalas may mga uh, taon-taon may naririnig tayo ng pagpaputok dyan sa mga areas na yan. And also in Caloacan, tama yun. The NCRPO chief says the mandate of his men is to ensure the safety of the public during upcoming celebration of New Year. Rogel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A BFP fire investigator from Taguig who investigated the fire incident in a mall in Taguig warns mall goers to be vigilant after the said event. My Bermudez will tell us why. Maging vigilante tayo and then pag pumapasok po tayo sa mall kasi malaki po siya, number one titignan po natin ng lahat po ng entrance at exit. A Taguig Fire City investigator who conducted a probe on the fire incident at a mall in the city warns shoppers to be extra vigilant this season. In this video which surfaced on social media, a giant lantern in a mall in Taguig was on fire last December 25. According to A.J. Luga, the witness and the person who posted the event on social media, he and his friends personally saw the fire as it billowed the activity area of the mall. Uh, nung time po na yun, uh, marami pong namimili kasi sale nga po. Then medyo crowded po, tapos maraming tao. And around 7.30 po, uh, isa po dun sa mga parol na nakasabit directly above nung sale area nila. Uh, bigla po nagliyab. Nire-require po yan ng Bureau of Fire na magkaroon ng sariling brigade team. Yung tinatawag namin fire brigade. Ngayon po sa kanila, meron po silang sarili. At ang tawag nga po nila ay Emergency Brigade Team. Yan po ay tinetrain namin dito at uh, nilelecturan namin kung anong dapat nilang gawin. Mall staff immediately responded and got pails with water which they poured in the burning area. After this, the staff picked pieces of clothing from the sale items to help in extinguishing the flamed lantern. Mall guards arrived with fire extinguishers after the lantern dropped. Isolated case lang talaga. And uh, yung pong nagkabit na contractor nila, six years na po. Ngayon lang nangyari ito. 
there are no reported deaths in the incident. But according to the arson investigator, there is a staff who gets slightly scratched due to the incident. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Quezon City Police District warns of imposing fines and penalties to those who would violate the existing ban on the use of firecrackers in Quezon City. Here's why from Abby Santa Ines. Any violation will be penalized with a fine of 5,000 pesos or one year imprisonment or both depending on discretion or assessment of the court. The Quezon City Police District or QCPD warns arrest and imposition of penalties against those who would violate the firecracker ban. Earlier, QCPD conducted an inspection of some stalls of firecrackers in Araneta Center in Cubao and checked their permits. According to QCPD Chief Police Superintendent Guillermo Eliazar, 69 villages in the city have been designated as firecracker zones. Some of these are in the villages of Sangandaan, Tandang Sora, North Fairview Greater Lagro, and Old Balara Batasan Hills, among others. Particularly designated as firecracker zones are plazas, parks, and other open areas in the said villages. This means those who want to use firecrackers can only do so in the designated zones. Meanwhile, some firecracker vendors in the city are complaining of low sales this year. Unlike this year, there were more customers of firecrackers in 2016 which resulted into high sales. This firecracker store has been open since 8 in the morning today. However, until now, no one comes to buy their products. Wala pa rin po kasi ano, mahina. Hindi katulad nung last year may lakas eh ngayon wala. Parang ang daming kasi takot. Sa 100%, 80% parang ayo talaga. Yung sa ngayon po, hindi pa po masyado mabenta. Ang benta po kasi po talaga is 30, 31 po. Doon po dumadagsa po yung mga tao. Some Filipinos prefer to purchase trumpets instead of firecrackers, saying it is safer and more affordable. Maganda, iwas pa putok. Iwas ba magputokan. Hindi mo ako nagpapaputok talaga, ma'am. Eh. Sayang lang po eh. Kailangan eh, doon na lang sa mga anak ko. Malacanang appeals anew to the public to follow the regulations released by the government for a peaceful and safe year and revelry. Abi Sandines, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Authorities confiscated last night firecrackers worth 100,000 pesos which were being sold online in Quezon City. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. The Quezon City Police District Special Operations Unit or QCDSOU received information about the alleged illegal selling of firecrackers by an online seller. The Z seller was allegedly posting and transacting at an online shopping site. This prompted the QC DSOU to conduct an entrapment operation against the suspect. The online seller and the supposed buyer, who was an operative of the QC DSOU, met along Mindanao Avenue at around 8 in the evening last night. The operatives discovered dozens of prohibited firecrackers inside an SUV. When the QC DSOU asked license to operate from the online seller, he could show nothing. Authorities immediately arrested the online seller, identified as Alvin Abianza, who was with his live-in partner Maria Celeste and their helper Danilo Tupas. Maria Celeste was the one who unknowingly did the transaction with the police. QCPD Commander Police Chief Superintendent Guillermo Elizar explains a firecracker seller should have a license to operate. He says it will ensure the safety of the public. Kailangan binibili natin dun sa mga entities na talagang authorized na mag-manufacture. And licensing and giving permits to this is one of the requirements para masiguro natin na talagang legitimate sila at nagbebenta sila nung mga items na hindi mag-gas, hindi magdudulot ng kapahamakan dun sa mga gagamit ito. Authorities confiscated from the suspect 100,000 peso worth of firecrackers including prohibited ones like 10,000 rounds of sawa, Judas belt and whistle bomb. The suspects refuse to provide a statement. They will face charges for violating the law on illegal selling of firecrackers. Meanwhile, the Quezon City Police will begin the deployment of cops across the city to ensure that its residents will comply with the ordinance SP-2618. It strictly regulates the selling and use of firecrackers. Under the new ordinance, the use of firecrackers in any public areas like roads, alleyways, parks, and basketball courts is prohibited. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 
The Bureau of Fire Protection and the Talavera Police Office remind residents of Nueva Ecija to be responsible in using firecrackers during their year-end revelry. Here's why from Leslie Longbowen. The Bureau of Fire Protection and the Philippine National Police inspected 21 newly opened stores of fireworks in designated fireworks display zones in the town of Talavera in the province of Nueva Ecija. Authorities checked if each stall has a permit from the local government unit and a certificate of training from the PNP's headquarters at Camp Crame. Pinapaalala lang po namin na mahigpit pong ipinagbabawal, hindi lang po ng kapulisan ng Talavera, kung hindi po ng uh, Philippine National Police National Headquarters, ang pagbebenta po ng malalakas na klase ng putok. Although the said stalls have passed safety standards, the BFP still vows to strictly monitor them. Meanwhile, some fireworks vendors worry of not earning this year due to the government's Iwas Paputok campaign. Kasi yung supplier natin, hindi rin gumawa ng ganung limit. Kung nag-limit din sila ng gawa. Kaya nung inaproba na kung pwede pa na magtinda ng mga mailaw, eh nagkarasunan sila. Leslie Longbo and UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Let's take a look at the traffic situation now along some major roads in Metro Manila. On Mega Q Mart, motorists are experiencing bumper to bumper traffic on the lane going to Cubao. While there is light to moderate flow of vehicles on the lane going to Monumento. On 5th Avenue in C3, Caloocan City, vehicles are fast moving on the lane going to A. Bonifacio. While motorists are also experiencing light traffic flow on the lane going to A. Mabini. On Alabang Sapori Road, motorists are experiencing moderate to heavy traffic on the lane going to Ayala, Alabang and Las Piñas City. While on the lane going to Muntinlupa City and South Luzon Expressway or SLEX, Motorists are experiencing moderate flow of vehicles. Meanwhile, some passengers continue to surge in bus terminals in Cubao even if trips are already fully booked. Here's why from Rajel Adora. Ticketing boots of some bus companies have stopped selling tickets because they no longer have available trips such as trips to the Bicol region. They need to wait for returning buses before they can accommodate the chance passengers. Some passengers are thinking of other ways to reach their destination, like Jean, in case she fails to get a ticket for a direct trip to Sorsogon. Sasakay na lang akong nampapuntang bulan. Eh, mahirap eh. Gusto kong makamaabutan yung New Year. Mas mahabang biyahe, di ba? Lina, basta makarating. According to Arneta Bus Terminal Management, their buses are delayed due to heavy traffic. Nagkaroon yata ng heavy traffic sa Monisari Ayak, Quezon. Kaya delayed din papasok dito sa Metro Manila. And as expected, dito rin sa Metro Manila, eh, ganoon din ang ating traffic. Meanwhile, only a few number of passengers wait at Bright Future Eastern Central Terminal. According to John Abner Gareza, manager of BFCT, they only have around 3 to 500 passengers a day. Yung mga passengers na yan, na naan dyan, uh, maa-accommodate naman sila. Sa so, pagdating po ng hapon, halos konti na lang po sila dyan. So, sa ngayon, okay naman po, hindi siya gano'ng ka-crowded yung kagaya ng mga nakikita namin sa TV. Na. As always, bus companies advise the public to plan and book ahead of their trips, especially during peak season, to ensure their slot bound for the provinces. Rogel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. A Filipina who suffered abuse in Iraq finally reunites with family. The Bureau of Fire Protection temporarily suspends the search and retrieval operations in a fire-stricken mall in Davao City. And damage caused by twin tropical storms Urduha and Vinta now at more than 2 billion pesos. Y News will be right back.
The Filipina house help who was rescued by the Philippine Embassy in Iraq several minutes after she used a Facebook Live to broadcast the assault of a relative of her employer has now reunited with her family. Here's why from Joe Anano. Although shaky because of nervousness and coldness, Alice Aguilan was happy for seeing her children again after six years. The Overseas Filipino Worker or OFW arrived at around 6 in the evening last night at the Nino Aquino International Airport or NAIA. The black eye in the face of Aguilan is still noticeable. She was welcomed by the personnel of the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration or OWA. Aguilan was the OFW base in Iraq who went viral recently on social media after she broadcasted on Facebook Live the assault against her of her co-worker last December 22. According to Alice, she was shocked about what happened saying it was just a normal day and that she and her employer did not have a fight before the incident. Sabi ko, ano problema mo? Sabi kong gano'n, ikaw ba makumuk? Kung bagas Arabic makumuk? Anong crazy ka ba gano'n? Alo, doon pag nagano, pinagbubugbog niya na ako noon kung saan ako tamaan, nagkandaihi talaga ako noon that time. She said the assault was prevented by a helper outside the house who overheard the shouts of the OFW. On the same day, Aguilan was rescued by the personnel of the Philippine Embassy in Iraq. However, she could not file charges against the man who beat her since she had been overstaying and work as TNT in the said country. Despite the incident, Aguilan still wants to return to the Arab country to work there so she could provide for her four children and two grandchildren. According to Attorney Brigido Dulay, Deputy Administrator of the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration or OWA, the agency will help Alice find a new job. Meanwhile, Attorney Dulay encourages OFW household workers to level up as skilled workers. OWA explains Filipino workers abroad would have better opportunity if they will undergo skills trainings. Attorney Dulay cites as an example the skills training being offered by the Technical Education and Skills Development Agency or TESDA. He notes the certification from TESDA is being recognized in many countries. Kasi kung ang plano ni Alice ay bukmalis uli, ay pwede natin siya mas maganda sana kung makapag-training sa sana uli. Eh, no? Para pag-alis ni Ma'am Alice, skilled na siya, skilled worker na. Meanwhile, OWA encourages victims of illegal recruitment to seek help from their office. For those who would like to seek help from OWA, you may contact them through their hotline number 551-1560 or send them text messages in the numbers 0917-TEXT-OWA. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Bureau of Fire Protection Region 11 temporarily suspends the search and retrieval operations at a mall in Davao City. Victor Cosare will tell us why. An explosion took place inside the New City Commercial Center Mall yesterday. This happened at around 9.45 in the morning while the Bureau of Fire Protection was conducting a search and retrieval operation inside the mall. As of now, authorities are still determining when they can resume the operations. Medyo nag-shake siya. So our grand commander decided to suspend the uh, search and retrieval. Meanwhile, the total value of damage caused by the fire is estimated to have reached 1.6 billion pesos. Upon BFP Region 11's initial investigation, the fire started at the furniture section on the third level of the mall. This, however, did not give a clear picture as to the cause of the fire that took the lives of 38 individuals. Yan po, uh, dinidetermine pa po natin yan. Kasi nga, yung sabi ko, may dalawang information na nanggaling po sa ceiling. Yung, yung apoy na tumulo and may nagsasabing din na galing sa floor. Authorities are also looking into the alleged insufficient fire exits or the fire exits that were left locked. That's why the victims were not able to escape. Victor Posare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A consumer group calls on President Rodrigo Duterte to not simultaneously implement price increases on products and services next year. Monokson will tell us why. Consumer group Laban Consumer, President Vic Dimagiba urges the public to become more frugal, to not experience having more bills in 2018. The group calls on President Rodrigo Duterte to not simultaneously implement price increases next year. This include the increase in water rates and other products and services that would be affected by the additional taxes. Alam ba, mali lang ang timing ng pagtaas ng ating uh, babayaran sa tubig. Uh, tatapat siya sa January, eh meron tayong bakas na itinaas sa mga exact sa petroleum products. 
at iba pang mga bilihin. President Rodrigo Duterte recently signed the first batch of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program of the administration. One impact of the law is the increase in the prices of petroleum products. According to the Department of Energy or DOE, the prices of gasoline, diesel, gas and liquefied petroleum gas or LPG will increase by 3 pesos come 2018. This is since petroleum products are among those that will be hit by the excise tax. Prices of other commodities are also expected to increase in 2018 as the additional taxes will also affect sugar-sweetened beverages. Electricity rates will also climb as coal is also covered by the excise tax. Recently, the MWSS approved the increase in water rates beginning in January of 2018. Manila will impose an almost a peso increase, while Manila Water will impose an additional of 50 cents. What happened was that every year there's going to be an increase based on inflation, but uh, for in particular for this January one, it was mitigated because the FCDA was it, uh, adjustment went down. The tariff, it was supposed to increase more, but because of the FCDA, the increase was mitigated. Because of the increase in prices of commodities and services, consumer groups say the public should be wiser in 2018. They argue it would be more expensive to wash clothes at home than to hire the services of a self-service laundry shop. But for Maria Fe Pancito, they might possibly increase their rates because of the expected increase in water prices. Kung magtataas man kami, medyo konti lang din naman. Well, may, may explain naman natin na maayos sa kanina. Kung talagang maintindihan naman nila. Until now, the group Laban Consumer is waiting for the response of President Rodrigo Duterte regarding their call to not simultaneously implement increases in prices of basic commodities and services in 2018. Mon Hoxon, UNTV, News and Rescue, Makati City. President Rodrigo Duterte vetoed some line items in the 2018 national budget. Here's why from Rosalie Cos. President Rodrigo Duterte submitted to Congress his 11-page veto message for some items in the 3.7 trillion pesos 2018 national budget or the Republic Act 10964, the General Appropriations Act for 2018. First is the collection of monitoring expenses of the Movie Television Review and Classification Board or MTRCB. According to the chief executive, all officials of the MTRCB are already receiving honoraria and per diem for performing their duties based on the standardization law. The president also vetoes the item that mandates the collection of payment for retention or reacquisition of Philippine citizenship, as well as the use of the Department of Education or DepEd of its school maintenance and operating expenses for paying items considered as capital outlay. Mr. Duterte also asked Congress to remove the provision that allows the Energy Regulatory Commission or ERC to use its earnings to augment its operational requirements. The president argues the ERC should effectively use its budget which is worth 413.60 million pesos. In his veto message, the president also asked the Congress to allow the creation of a trust fund that will come from the collections of the Bureau of Immigration or BI from its express lane policy and other charges. Mr. Duterte explains the trust fund will be allotted for the salaries and overtime pay of immigration employees. It would remain in effect until the two houses of Congress affirm the new immigration modernization law in 2018. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Liberal Party senators questioned the appointment of Nicanor Faildon as new OCD deputy administrator. Here's why from Gays Kassin. Liberal Party senators lament that the appointment of former Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon as deputy administrator of the Office of the Civil Defense is an injustice. Senator Francis Pangilinan says they respect the president's prerogative but he must avoid appointing those with questionable integrity. Faildon resigned as customs commissioner after he was implicated in the smuggling of 6.4 billion worth of shabu from China into the port of Manila. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque stresses that Feldon's appointment as Deputy Administrator 3 of the Office of the Civil Defense is part of the exclusive prerogative of the president. 
Meanwhile, National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council spokesperson Mina Marasigan says Faeldon still has to undergo orientation. He will administer the OCD's regional offices and will also be the director of the regional councils. Well, we want him to be part na talaga at sana makapiling na namin. Eh, sa kasalukuyan, kailangan muna niya rin muna parang bagong kahit sinong bagong opisyal. Eh, kailangan eh, mapag-aralan niya muna kung ano ba talaga ang magiging role niya dito sa ahensya ito. OCD Administrator and NDRRMC Executive Director Yusek Ricardo Halad says he supports the appointment of Fael Don, saying such appointment will be a great help in his job. Meanwhile, Rocky adds that Fael Don's Senate detention will not affect his performance as OCD's Deputy Administrator. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. The Social Weather Station has released the result of its newest survey with Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serena's net satisfaction rating hitting the lowest this year. Here's why from Roderick Mendoza. The public satisfaction rating of Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serena hits a new low as the year ends. In a social weather station survey conducted from December 8 to 16, Serena got a positive 6, her lowest in 2017. It dropped again from positive 9 last September and her lowest rating since December 2015 when she got a negative 1. More Filipinos become dissatisfied with Sereno at 28%. The survey was conducted while Sereno's impeachment is being heard in Congress. Lawyer Josa Di Inla, a spokesperson for Sereno, however, says the Chief Justice's rating has remained neutral and she still have the trust of the people despite the baseless and malicious allegations. She adds that Sereno will remain focused on her responsibilities to improve the country's justice system. Meanwhile, the public remains satisfied with Vice President Lenny Robredo and Senate President Coco Pimentel. They were able to keep a good rating at positive 42 and positive 49 respectively. Parating masaya pag, pag nakikita natin na tumataas yung numero sa survey. Kasi affirmation nito na <clears throat> parang nasa tamang landas. Uh, nasa tamang landas yung, yung ginagawa. Consistently ngayong taon, um, umaakyat tayo. Kaya yung sinasabi naman natin sa staff natin, na kung ano yung ginagawang uh, tama, talagang patuloy na gagawin at paghuhusayan pa. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez also gained in the survey. His ratings were up from neutral positive 6 to moderate positive 14. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, the Commission on Human Rights, or CHR, expresses discontent and doubt over the data released by Malacanang on its war on drugs. My Bermudez will tell us why. Based on data from Malacanang, about 4,000 individuals lost their lives due to the war on drugs since President Rodrigo Duterte took office, while there are over 16,000 deaths considered as homicide cases under investigation. Some 118,000 drug personalities were arrested from July 1, 2016 to November 27, 2017 based on the data. The CHR, on the other hand, insists the war on drugs has been better under the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA since individuals suspected to be involved in illegal drug activities have been arrested, unlike under the conduct of the Philippine National Police or PNP wherein a number of drug suspects were killed. The Commission also argues PIDEA's system of implementation on the government's drug war must be the same system that will be used by the PNP now that they're back in the anti-illegal drugs operations. We do welcome the pronouncement of the administration that next year's uh, implementation of the drug campaign will be carried out more uh, smoothly and with adherence to the rule of law having recognized that uh, lessons have been learned from uh, the current year. Although presidential spokesperson Harry Roque stated that the CHR is in no position to give any comments and to condemn the government's policies, the CHR insists 
it is only performing its mandate. In fact, we are trying to the best of our ability to investigate all cases involving human rights violations. And we are also monitoring government's compliance with its treaty obligations. But we hope that in the coming year, it will be continued without uh, resorting to shortcuts or to lapses. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Calabarzon police is hoping to immediately address its problem on jail congestion in 2018. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. The number of detainees who died in prison of Region 4A has climbed to 172 this year. The Calabarzon police say the deaths were due to contraction of various diseases like tuberculosis and respiratory problems because of too much congestion. Aside from this, the inmates also contract various skin diseases due to poor ventilation in prison cells. With this, the Calabarzon Police hopes to address its problem on jail congestion in Region 4A in 2018. Mga programa po sila na magpapatuyo sila ng mga facilities at improve nila yung mga detention facilities nila. So hopefully next year, um, may isa katuparan ngayong mga plano na yun. According to Police Regional Office 4A PIO Chief, Police Superintendent Citadel Gawiran, they have already brought up the problem to local government officials. Pinulong din ni, ni RD na kung hagat maaari, medyo mapabilis yung proseso ng uh, commitment, yung commitment order. Eh, mailipat sila sa Sa ating mga sabi GNP. Aside from the PNP detention facilities, the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP prison facilities are also congested. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Damage caused by tropical storm Urduha and Vinta now reach more than 2 billion pesos. Here's why from Victor Cosare. Almost all houses in Barangay Pagulonga in Salvador, Lanao del Norte have been washed out by Tropical Storm Vinta. Just in the whole municipality of Salvador, the death toll has already reached more than 40. Another 20 are missing. A total of 3,600 individuals were affected by the typhoon. This prompted the town's chief executive to seek assistance from the national government. More than 100 houses are damaged. Four barangays here in our town. And of course, the relief goods, the water in the two barangays, Mindalano and Kalimuda. In another report, Barangay Tugaya in Tubod, Lanao del Norte, recorded 30 persons dead and 60 missing. Dami pong namamatay, nawawala po hanggang hindi pa nila nakikita. Tapos ang banda po doon yung pinsan ko, tinangay din po hanggang hindi pa natagpuan. Napakasakit sobra. Subok din kay ma'am, kay ang akong sakop ng mga tao, nagi mga daghan-daghan ang mga biktima. Subok yun, giligid unta maayaw nga mahitabo. Based on the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council report, death toll after Tropical Storm Vinta is at 164 and the number of missing individuals is at 176. Vice President Lenny Robredo laments the increasing number of deaths brought by the typhoon despite the goal for zero casualty. Palagay ko panahon ito para um, i-assess ulit natin kung ano yung mali na ginagawa natin. Meanwhile, the total damage in agriculture and infrastructure brought by Tropical Storm Urduha has now reached more than 2 billion pesos. Tropical Storm Vinta, on the other hand, left more than 400 million pesos cause of damage in agriculture and infrastructure in Zamboanga del Sur, Lanao del Norte, Agusan del Sur, and in Region 9 and 10. Authorities target to restore the cell phone signals in Zamboanga del Norte and Misamis Oriental before the year ends. Restoration of power supply in areas affected by Vinta is now underway. The NDRRMC are also looking into the fishermen who were rescued in Palawan. Currently, tinecheck natin ngayon kung itong mga mangingisda na ito ay nai-report na po sa mga missing list natin. Pero 74 persons po ang rescued. No, dahil po dun sa mga pananalasa pa, ng bagyong vinta sa ating banta, ah, bansa, uh, 39 dito ay talagang taga Palawan. 
In total, the government has distributed more than 16 million pesos worth of family food packs and non-food items to the victims of the two tropical storms. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Passengers stranded at the port of Real Quezon for one week and finally push through with their travels today. This after the Philippine Coast Guard, or PCG, has allowed passenger vessels in Real Quezon to sail. Ang mga pasahero po mga nakaali sa atin ay 296 na po. Uh, ang bilang po ng mga stranded na pasahero po natin dito ay 493. Ang recommendation po namin, uh, pagkatapos po dun sa nangyaring trahedya, ay yung paghihigpit po sa terminal. Despite this, the PCG still prohibits small sea vessels from sailing to avoid accidents. The PCG also urges operators of small vessels to follow the agency's advice. PCG canceled the travel of some motor boats with routes to Polillo Island and Burdios last week after the sinking of the Murcraft 3, which left five of its passengers dead. Those are the reasons behind the news. December 28, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know... We will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news?